get busy with video number two on slope of a line. And in this video, we're going to find the slope of a line from a graph. We're going to describe it, and then we're going to find it. So ladies and gentlemen, as we look at this graph, let's remember, how do we read graphs? That's right. Just like we read words on a page, we go from left to right. So when we take a look at this and we see that it rises from left to right, we know that this is a positive slope. So that's how we describe it. It is positive. It rises from left to right. And now we want to find that slope. And the first thing we're going to do is find the rise over the run. Remember, slope is equal to the ratio of the rise to the run. I'm trying to switch all these colors here just to make it very good. So we're going to do the rise. And we can see because it's positive, we have to go up first. And we're going to go up one, two. We're going up two. So my rise is two. To my run, which I have to go to the right, we always run to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going six to the right. So our rise is two, our run is six. And because this is a ratio, because it acts like a fraction in the fact that it can be simplified, we can write this simplified slope as one to three. Now you're probably wondering, well, we counted it and you got two over six, so how could the slope really be one to three or have a slope of one third. A slope of one third meaning that we're rising one and we're running three. Well, let's take a look at our graph. Let's take a look at our graph and see if we can rise one and run, whoa. Let's see if we can rise one and run three and end up where we, where we did when we went up two and six. So starting at point negative four one, if I go up one and over one, two, three, I'm right on the line. And then I can go up one and over one, two, three again, and I end up on that other point. So as you can see, the simplified slope does get us to the end point that we counted to when we first initially counted rise over run. Outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to example number two, where in this case, when we take a quick look, we can see that this line from left to right is falling so we have what we call a negative slope. And of course, our slope as our a ratio of rise to run, we can count down. And in this particular case, we're counting down one. So that would be a negative one. When you count down, it is negative. And then we have a run of one, two, three, four, five. So our slope, negative one over five. Can that be simplified? Nope. It is what it is already. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go on to example number three. Now example number three, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going back to our definition of slope. We know it's rise over run, and when we have a graph, we can physically count it. But I'm going on to the change in y over the change in x, which we call the vertical change to the horizontal change. And we want to count that or calculate that mathematically. What do we use? We use the slope formula. So remember when we wrote slope formula at the beginning, F-O-R-M-U-L-A, the slope formula, and we call that slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to talk about the fact that they have these y sub 2s and y sub 1s. And all that means, all that is saying, all that is saying is that I have an ordered pair. Let me use green. I have this ordered pair x, y. And these two are the ordered pairs. And we're just taking and saying that one of these ordered pairs is called the first point, and the other ordered pair is called the second point. And so we're just labeling these sub ones and sub twos as saying that this is our first point and this is our second point. So as I write these uh, points down that we're going to start with, we have point negative one, two. Well, I can label these. I can label these as x1 and y1. That first point I can call x1, y1. And then when I go to my second point, 3, negative 3, again, I can call that x1, uh, x2 this time and y2. And so now that I have those points labeled, that I've designated negative 1, 2 as our first point, 3, negative 3 as our second point, I can substitute the numbers into the formula and say y2 right here 
is negative three minus, we always have to remember to put that minus sign before we go to the next number. And then we have y1, which is two. And of course, that is going to be over in our ratio x2, which is right here, and that is three minus x1, which is a negative one. And now when we do the math, we have negative three minus two, which is negative five. And we have three minus a negative one, which is four. And so our slope is negative five, four. Now, we understand that that slope is, we forgot to describe it, but we can see that since this line is falling, we do have a negative slope. And when we calculated it, using the slope formula, we ended up with a negative slope. Down five over four. In other words, our slope means that we are going down five and then we're running four to the right. I'm talking about that a lot. And of course, if we go to our graph and actually physically count it to see if we, our math was accurate, accurate, we can start at negative one, two and go down one, two, three, four, five, down five, and then we can run four to the right, one, two, three, four, and voila, we ended up right where we wanted to. Let's do this one more time with example number four, using the slope formula, where the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And of course, it doesn't matter. In the last situation, we took the first point and we called that x1, y1. And the second point was x2, y2. Well, in this case, I'm gonna switch it. And I'm gonna call the first point negative one, negative two. I'm gonna call that x2 and y2. And I'm gonna call the second point that we would come to, I'm gonna call that x1 and y1. I want you to understand, it does not matter, it does not matter which point is designated as the first point and which point is designated as the second point. It makes no difference, as long as you're consistent. In other words, if you subtract x2 minus x1, you don't want to then subtract y2 minus y1, it's not, um, or y1 minus y2. You wouldn't want to reverse it. You just want to stay consistent. So when we fill these numbers into the formula, in this case, we have y2, which is negative 2, minus y1, which is 2, all over x2, which is negative 1, minus x1, which is 2. And when we do this math, we get negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4. And we have negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. And then, of course, when we simplify that, because a negative over a negative is positive, our final answer is 4 over 3. And again, we come back and we say, is that logical? And yes, because if we describe the slope of this line, we see that it rises, and we would call it a positive slope line. And so when we end up with a positive slope answer, we're saying, yeah, that makes sense. And again, let's verify it because we can always count it on the graph to see that it made no difference that I used the second point as point two. When I say the second point, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about this one up here, calling this x1, y1, and calling this x2, y2 down here. So if I count up from point negative one, negative two, and I count up four, one, two, three, four, I go up four, and then I run three to the right, one, two, three, voila. I still get where I was even though I reversed the order of the points when I did the math. So ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot to absorb, but we have a lot of time. We have a lot of time to get this down. We're not going to worry about it too much in stress. We're going to be practicing and reviewing this all year long. So ladies and gentlemen, slope formula and counting the slope on the, on the graph, two very straightforward things and we're going to be doing it a lot. So that ends this video. You do have a quick write. I gave you a copy of these graphs for you to count and use the slope formula if you want to practice. Remember, the slope formula, where slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, it makes no difference which point is one and which point is two. We do have one more video, so let's get to it in a few minutes. Bye.